few things I need to mention. But, uh, thank you, Jeffrey. There are glasses in your bags, so if you, uh, if you look in those bags, you'll see them. And finally, there are people standing in the back. There are tons of seats available up front here. Please use the, the chairs up front and don't stand in the back. Come on, it's plenty of And virtually all of that growth has been thanks to one thing, 3D. And I think this is actually something to um, celebrate, almost. Unfortunately, it seems there are some in Hollywood who um, are determined to seize defeat from the jaws of victory. So I actually believe this is a good time to step back and assess the goods, the bads, and the uglies of our experience in 3D so far. 2009 was 3D's first real year of um, viability with enough screens worldwide to support a film at a time wide release. The year started with Monsters vs. Aliens, which was the first animated movie conceived and authored in 3D, and it ended with Avatar, which was, well, Avatar. What <laughs> more can be said? For years, this will likely be the standard against which all 3D films will be measured. 2010, by contrast, has earned to, it's turned into um, what you might call the um, not quite terrible twos. At first, the year picked up where 2009 left off. Alice in Wonderland, I think, further demonstrated the worldwide popularity of 3D, and this was followed by several movies, are How to Train Your Dragon, Shrek Forever After, and Toy Story 3, all authored in 3D, and all very successful and well-received. So I guess we could say that's the good. As the year progressed, Things quickly uh, got to bad, as a number of 2D movies were rushed through 3D conversions and the results were, well, downright ugly. It's simply not going to be acceptable or successful to ask our customers to pay a premium price for a bad experience. The seeds of this have been planted, distrust has already been triggered, and the pitfalls would seem to be obvious. When it comes to 3D conversion, here's the bottom line. Over the years, the film industry has come up with any number of ways to make a bad movie worse. Conversion of 2D to 3D is just the newest. Whether it's adding scope or Dolby or digital effects, none of these things will rescue a turkey. And neither will 3D, which when done badly, has the unique power to transform a bad movie into a painful movie. <laughs> Which you then add insult to, in insult to injury by asking our customers to pay more for it. Well, that's just not going to work. Bad 3D has brought out some ugly comments from some 3D skeptics. And this is something to be expected. Three quarters of a century ago, our industry saw the last great revolution in filmmaking, the arrival of sound and color. The skeptics back then were just as loud and just as vocal. Regarding sound, none other than Harry Warner, one of the Warner brothers, said in 1927, and I quote, who in the hell wants to hear actors talk? End quote. <laughs> Well, it turned out, most everybody. And despite some pretty awful early talkies, sound was here to stay. Then came color, which also viewed, was viewed skeptically by many, and it took some 30 years before it became a dominant format for motion pictures. So, today's 3D skeptics come from a not-so-proud tradition of naysayers. They like to say that 3D is just a gimmick, and therefore will fail, as it did when it first appeared in the 1950s. I actually think this is a misread of history. 3D failed back then because analog technology simply wasn't adequate. We had to wait until digital technology arrived to bring film into the 3D age. In much the same way, both sound and color also experienced early failures until the proper technology came along. 
So I think uh, the greatest legitimate concern raised has actually been about the brightness of the projected image. It is true that current 3D movies aren't as bright as 2D films. And I think this has been a little bit a less of a concern for the consumer, but it has been very troubling for the filmmaking community. At any rate, it is actually a temporary issue and is about to get solved. The next generation of 3D projection systems are coming in as little as 12 to 18 months. And these will be uh, laser-based, uh, bringing the brightness of 3D movies up to near equivalence to 2D. Meanwhile, the quality of the glasses, which I'll talk about a little later, and the silver screens are also improving. This means that if a 3D project were put into production today, by the time it would be released in theaters, these new brighter projection systems and better glasses and screens will have already started to be deployed in theaters around the world. And I think we can expect theaters to make the upgrade fairly quickly because these laser systems reduce power consumption by almost 50%. So the capital investment can be recouped in less than 18 months. In other words, the movie theater 3D experience, which is already at a high level of quality, is going to be getting even better and pretty darn quick. This, again, is very similar to what happened with sound and color, which steadily improved over the years. There are some who are saying that the public is already tiring of 3D. This seems to be largely based on the fact that this summer, Toy Story 3 derived 61% of its box office from 3D, while the last airbender was 50.7%, and Despicable Me was just 45%. However, those numbers do not indicate a declining interest in 3D. They are telling a very different story. And that is that there still aren't enough 3D screens to meet demand. Those three films were released right up against one another in a too tight four-week period. Toy Story was the first with a huge number of 3D screens. Two weeks later, it lost screens to Last Airbender. And the week after that, both films lost screens to Despicable Me. Individually, these three films may have been hurt by the scarcity of screens, and therefore those percentages were down. But collectively, they brought 3D revenues to nearly one quarter of all box office throughout that period. To date, six of the 10 top movies of this year have been 3D releases. I gotta say that again. Six of the top 10 films this year were 3D releases. This compares to zero of the top 10 movies two years ago. So what does it take to prove the point that audiences are embracing 3D? I guess we're gonna have to have 10 of the top 10 films be in 3D. <laughs> it's also instructive to look at the aggregate numbers. From January through August of this year, 3D box office was up 161% over the same period in 2009. At the same time, the box office as a whole was up only 3% and admissions were down 2%. This has been spectacular growth driven by the enthusiasm of 3D audiences. I don't know what planet someone would have to be on to think that these statistics reflect, quote, a declining interest in 3D, end quote. As for the issue of pricing, there has been absolutely no pushback on the upcharge for quality 3D product. Our internal research on our own 3D films has consistently indicated that the vast majority of our customers loved the 3D and thought it was more than worth the extra charge. Over the past 60 days, I have visited and met with the top exhibitors from more than 40 countries, including all the top exhibitors here in the US. And pricing has not been an issue at the consumer level, anywhere in the world for top films. Clearly, the public is willing to pay a premium price as long as we give them a premium experience. Around the world, exhibitors are continuing to ramp up to meet the demand, the growing demand. Two years ago, when we were here at this conference, there were 1,800 3D screens worldwide. By the end of this year, there will be 21,000 screens. 
and there will be over 30,000 screens by the end of 2011. With this kind of massive worldwide commitment, it is clear that 3D is here to stay. That is as long as we in Hollywood are. And so the 3D ball sits squarely in our court. Consumers and exhibitors have voted with their dollars by buying tickets and investing in equipment. It is up to us to provide better and better product by producing great 3D films that are authored for this medium. If instead we continue converting 2D films into 3D, which today cannot deliver a quality experience, then I am pretty certain we will put this whole new opportunity in jeopardy. The fact is, consumers are smart. How is it that they can almost always smell a stinker, no matter how well its scent is masked by flashy marketing and promotion? This is more true today than ever before when the public has so much instant information. When it comes to 3D, they have already figured out the difference between Pandora and Piranha. As a result, we in Hollywood actually now face a very stark choice. We can head down the path of exploitation by making quick, cheap, and yes, ugly post-production, post-conversion 3D. Or we can follow the path of filmmakers like Jim Cameron, Marty Scorsese, Steven Spielberg, Peter Jackson, Michael Bay, and pursue the enormous creative promise of this new medium. The first path degrades the film industry advances it. The first path says to the public, we want to trick them. The second says, we treasure them. The first path continues the trend of lower box office and lower admissions. The second takes us to growth. The first path will lead us to a punishing backlash. The second will continue the greatest innovation for the movie theater experience in 75 years. If we squander the opportunity, especially after the historic success of Avatar, the movie industry refused to pursue sound after the jazz singer, or color after the Wizard of Oz and Gone with the Wind. Now as then, as, as then, the Hollywood film industry has the greatest concentration of creative talent in the world. These individuals are the successors to the pioneers who took sound and color a great express 3d does remain the opportunity of our lifetime and this is the moment and the choice is ours